welcome to another edition of the Big Head Pod here on the Dub Network. Today's show, once again, is brought to you by Herman Marshall Whiskey. Dallas County's first distillery of handcrafted award-winning small batch whiskey. Patiently aged in new white oak barrels in the great state of Texas. Built from the grain up like good whiskey and better friends should be. They've got a rye, a bourbon, and a blend, and they're working on a single malt. And they are opening a brand new facility here in Wiley in the spring, so look forward to that. Guys, and it's going to be state-of-the-art with an outdoor venue and everything else. So they've got a little tasting room right now they're building in Wiley as well. So you guys get a hair up on your backside, you want to drive through Wiley, check out Herman Marshall Whiskey over there. And uh, also check out Early Bird CBD. This stuff helps me sleep at night with a little bit of whiskey, a little bit of the uh, CBD stuff. It helps me sleep at night. It's great sleep, nice wake up in the morning, feel refreshed. Go to earlybirdcbd.com and use the... The code Big Head Pod get twenty percent off your first order, and any orders before three p.m. are, del- are sent out that day. So get a chance to try it out. This stuff's good. They're, uh, I love it. I take two of them every night. So get, figure it out and, and try both. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Where we live. So without further ado, I'd like to bring my next guest on. He played a long time in Major League Baseball. Played all over the place. Played in cold weather, warm weather, and he lives here now in the great state of Texas. Mr. Daryl Evans. Daryl, how are you, sir? Hey, Kev. I'm doing great, buddy. Good to see you this morning. Absolutely. Beating this this cold weather, rain here, and everything else. So it, you know how it is around here. It can be 80 one day and 45 the next, and we're at the 45 part of it today. So it doesn't look like there'll be any golf going, especially with the rain here. No, I, well, you know, it's great. People, uh, I think most people finally figured out when it's cold, uh, you know, you stay inside with the heater and when it's hot you stay inside with air conditioning you know this this uh so people finally figure that out yep everybody's <laughs> yeah thinning out the blood and everything else i still haven't thinned <laughs> out yet but heck i'm still in shorts i'll wear shorts until it until i'm forced to not wear it so and then as, as long as my ears are covered d i'm good so and you did i mean playing in detroit you played in the snow didn't you i'm sure you did Oh, my gosh. You know what the best part? Remember the fun part when uh, you leave for spring training and it's nice and warm and you got a tan and, you know, you're feeling really good, looking for an opening day. And uh, then you go to Chicago or Minnesota or, or, you know, a bunch of places and it's and you got to wear four layers of clothes and uh, and, and it's a three hour flight. So, you know, those kind of things. Uh, uh, rude awakenings, and it's almost like starting over, wasn't it? I mean, it was like, uh, shoot, we did all this work down there. Everything's all good. And then, uh, you know, you would think that they maybe should have started the season later, um, but uh, they didn't care about us. No. So, they, but never, it was a, uh, nah. they never do. <laughs> no. And you're, you're, a, you're a, a Pasadena boy, right? You're a California kid, so you hadn't been around that weather, right? <laughs> Well, no, you know, growing up, of course not. Yeah, Pasadena, right there, but uh, you know, I grew up three miles from the Rose Bowl, and and I was very blessed. I mean, I look back now, and I was really blessed. You know, the, the weather was uh, year-round playing sports. Uh, never had to, you know, worry about that unless, you you know, you could drive up to the mountains and get some snow once in a while, but who wants to do that when you could stay down there and uh, play year-round? So, yeah, and then, you know, you go to spring trainings in Florida, Arizona, and uh, um, you don't even realize what the rest of the, the country has to go through. So, but it was great. Uh, you know, one of the, the great things, though, is the people, the fans were so great, you know, finding that out afterwards. They were so hardy. They were so looking forward to it, and they and you just didn't realize what they had had to go through in the wintertime and get ready for all that kind of stuff. So that, that tradition was really a great part of what we did. You know, I, I, I enjoyed that as much as anything, and getting to play in all those different ballparks. And, uh, and you know, that we were talking about San Francisco a little bit earlier. You know, I grew up in Southern California watching these giant Dodger games and uh, seeing people with parkas and, and the uh, freeze of the death up in so supposedly sunny California, but uh, San Francisco was so brutal during the summer, even. So, uh, you know, uh, they don't give us credit for having, having to deal with all those things, I think. Yeah, what do you think? Probably not. I heard that the, the, <laughs> the candlestick had some, there were some really wicked winds that would come across there. Is that true? Oh, my gosh. Well, you know, that, that was the worst part. And, so you couldn't control that, you know, obviously you could, well, you know, if it was cold to wear enough clothes or whatever, could try to keep warm, but, uh, you know, the, the wind always played so much, uh, 
of a difference there. And people ask me about that. Dude. And I always thought, uh, you know, it was okay going there and visiting team when I was with the with the Braves and going there and, uh, you know, you're in there three days and you're in and out and you can deal with it and all that stuff. But then when I got to trade over the Giants, I loved it going cl close to home and being part of that Dodger Giant rivalry was what well, you got to do there. You know, Red Sox and, and Yankees. I mean, but I think the Giants Dodger was was even bigger. And of course, on the on the West Coast, you know, it's a long time thing. So, and then you had to put up. You know, games got won and lost because of the wind. You know, balls get blown different ways. Uh, uh, you know, there, just some things that affected the games, unfortunately. But uh, uh, you know, it was an identity for the Giants fans and an identity for the players. Player, I played there almost eight years and. Uh, I love I love playing there uh, until the game started. You know, <laughs> is ca is Candlestick still there? Or they knock it down. I know they built. Uh, no, no, they, no, they, no. Suppose they got luxury condominiums there. You know, I mean, who who's gonna buy a cat? Come on, <laughs> who's gonna buy? Oh. It's morning time over there, Daryl. Get the cats waking you up. It's, uh, it's, uh, hey, man. Yeah, no, he's he's. <laughs> He's a little needy, right? It looks like. So, uh, yeah, who's going to buy a luxury condominium? And uh, you know, when you got thirty mile an hour winds and uh, freezing cold all the time, but uh, they pulled it off at San Francisco, I guess. So, uh, yeah, no, they they you know the the thing about it too is the the Hardy Niners played there, and it, you know, it, it, in October and November, it, the winds kind of died down, and it was it was kind of a ballpark like it was supposed to be. And unfortunately, we didn't get played during that time. So, you know, we we never got in the World Series uh, and had some great teams there. Uh, you know, I get to play with a storied Willie McCovey and yeah, Clark. And, you know, we, we had great divide of blue. We, we, and uh, Joe Morgan, Randy Smith were there. And we just couldn't get over beating the Dodgers in the big red machine. So uh, it, it was it was a joy. And it was a great kind of traditional town in that uh, where they even used to give away these uh, these pins you put on your hat to crawl the candlestick. And because if you went out in that weather, uh, they they had to give you a medal as a fan. And uh, I remember in 83 in the All-Star game, when I, when I, I mean, the All-Star game that year, and, and three or four others played, and we wore our our crawled a candlestick on our hats, and uh, it, it was it was a sign of uh, perseverance or whatever, I guess. And for the fans, it was great. So that so that nostalgia is gone now. So apparently, I, I don't do that now with the. I don't even know what the new stadium's even called now in San Francisco. Is hey, it? They change every year, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. The highest uh, bidders. I'll, I'll, <laughs> So you haven't been there? Well, it's a great, it's a great ballpark. Oh yeah, we it. played there. It's I just great. the name changed. It was. Um, oh right. The, the, okay. it, you know, it changes every year. Whoever has the most, I guess, whoever throws yeah. out the most money at it. Now you get the guys out there, and you know, they, with uh, McCovey Cove, with the guys out there in the canoes fighting for the ball and everything else. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. Well, you know, great, great. You know, they, they. One thing the Giants and that's been fantastic. Uh, they have a Willie McCovey Award, which they give away every year to the, uh, the and it's usually the last week or last game of the season. Uh, they cut the MVP from, you know, for the, the ball players vote on it. And it started, of course, a long time ago when, uh, and when Mack had retired and uh, I was, I was the second uh, one to win it. And, and it's a great honor and we, and they bring us back out there uh, the last game they did this year too. Uh, of course, Mac passed away two years ago, about five days after the Willie McCovey award ceremony. Almost, you know, all of us got a chance to see him, and uh, you know, just he's such a beloved figure there to me. The San Francisco is uh, Willie is Willie McCovey, and you know, although Mays played there before, but uh, he's he's so obviously he's got McCovey Cove and everything, and. and uh, uh, I don't know, one of the first or second year when the ball, new ballpark was open and we were sitting there watching the Mac and I, he, has a, he had a suite up there. And we were sitting there watching batting practice for the game. And, and he turned to me and he go, and you know, I was coaching then just right after, I think the, right around the time I was, I first saw you in, in Wilmington, but, and uh, he turned to me and he goes, duty. And 
you know, that's my nickname, Howdy Duty, in a lot of places. So he called me Duty. Uh, hey, we're taking batting practice here, and I went, Matt, you know, we've been, we haven't played for a while either, too. So, and he, uh, and he kind of looked down, and he had this wistful look, and then he turned to me and he goes, "What would we have done in this ballpark?" So you know that that win was it changed so much, I think, and you know basically to us it's a short porch in right field. You know it was opened up and thought of as oh it's a big ballpark and everything, but you know it's a short porch out there, and of course Barry Bonds took advantage of it, the other guys too, and uh, that that's that's I'll, I'll never forget that moment uh, sharing that with Willie, and uh, just one of those things that yeah I would have loved playing in that ballpark, I think. Better than in Detroit, the old Detroit Stadium, old Tiger Stadium. Oh yeah, but well, well, yeah, well, Tiger Stadium. For you know, I played 15 years in the National League, and then I got to go. Uh, you know, I was a free agent, so I picked Detroit, and people thought I was crazy. But uh, you know, obviously, we went to World Series. Uh, we had one of the great teams of all time. I think we had uh, the, in the 80s there. Went to playoffs at 87, one or two games out for five or six years. And anyway, I picked them uh, because people told me about the ballpark. I had never been, you know, I played in the National League, so I'd never been in those great old ballparks. Uh, you know, Yankee Stadium, Fenway, and then, of course, Tiger Stadium. <laughs> Excuse me. So I was I was really looking forward to that. And, and people tell me about how great it was, you know, and everything else. It was. It was great. Uh, when I got there, uh, you know, I didn't see it until after spring training. So walking in that ballpark, we were on the road for a week. And then going, actually going in that ballpark and looking out there right field and seeing it, that short porch, um, yeah, it was exciting and everything. But then when you pan over to center field and it's 440 feet, um, that you know, that kind of tempered things because I think I kind of made a mistake in 84. We, you know, we won the World Series with 35 and 5. I mean, just just a magical, magical year. But um, I tried to pull too much. Uh, you know, I tried to hook the ball too much, I think, a little bit. And, you know, new pitchers and all, all new, new pop, you know, new excitement and everything. <clears throat> because I realized the first time I ever hit a ball to the center field, uh, you know, that Olympic sprinter was out there camped under it. And I was like, well, what do I do now? I can't, I mean, I, you know, I'm, you got to hit a 441 feet at least, which how often do you do that? So it, it changed my stroke a little bit. It was a wonderful place that threat, <clears throat> I think, to the pitchers about, you know, uh, it's just a fly ball to right field. And uh, Joe Necro told me one time, good friend of mine he with the Yankees he goes hey it's really hard to pitch in in Detroit because every time you step back you brush your back against the, the right field wall so yeah it, it was a it was a unique place as you know and just a magnificent uh, the oldest park at, in, in baseball at the time uh you know many times just sitting there and hello and things are looking out and going man you know and Babe Ruth and Joe DiMaggio and and Ty Cobb and all these guys played in this ballpark, and here you are standing there, uh, just realizing that you know you're part of that now too. So, the greatest fans and uh, me to me, best sports fans in the country, and uh, all their tradition with uh, Michigan, Michigan State, and the Pistons, and uh, it's hockey town and Motown. It was it was it was a great great time. So, uh, what, you, what you, you played with what? There was <laughs> at least what three, four Hall of Famers on that '84 team. Yeah, it should be more. Uh, you know, they finally Jack Morris and Alan Trammell uh, finally got you know finally got in there, and then uh, I think Lou Whitaker's I think's yeah. got a good chance of doing it this year, uh, or you know the old timers or, or whatever. So. You know, it was an all-star team. Lance Parrish was a catcher. He was the best catcher in baseball at the time. We, you know, it's got, it's got Lemon in center field as good as anybody. And uh, Kirk Gibson are right. Uh, you know, tri Whitaker, Trammell up the middle. And uh, Wasn't Morris Gibby on that team, too? And, was Kirk Gibson on that team with you? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, 
<clears throat> you know, he had two home runs the last game of this uh, the World Series. You know, we we won four to one against the Padres. We swept uh, Kansas City. We started off thirty five and five, uh, the greatest start of all time. And uh, so I look back, and people, go, oh, wow, how'd that happen? And I go. Well, you got to realize in the four four of the five games we lost, we had a, the winning run at the plate in the ninth inning too. So it was just a uh, uh, well, a talent, obviously, a, a super talented team, and those guys were all uh, coming up in their prime, and it was just fun as a as a veteran player to go join that, and then uh, getting off to a great start in that town, and just you know, it, it, well, you know, winning. You realize how many people are happy about that. You know, it just turns people's lives on, and and uh, it, it, Michigan needed it at the time, of course. Uh, and it's just the atmosphere is so incredible, and it for a, for a great city that gets maligned, and and you know, it's a beautiful place outside downtown, and uh, you know, it's just such a great tradition and great people. So. Um, I, I was lucky to be there at the right time and uh, and and plus be on a team with all those great players. You know what? That was American League East at the time. We were in American League East and um, probably six best teams in baseball were all in that same division. You know, the Yankees had all these, you know, they had the, at the time they were great. They in fact, you know, I tell people in 81, the, the best record in baseball was the Yankees. 82 was Milwaukee. 83 was Baltimore. 84 was Detroit. 85 was Toronto, 86 was New York, and then, or I mean, Boston, and then we were again in 87. And yet it went 100 games and and beat beat the best teams in baseball just to, to get in the playoffs back then. Yeah, back Short when there's playoffs. only two divisions, right? That was it. We just had the East and the West, right? Yeah, and so, you know, you're, you're uh, of course, you had to play great all year. And like I said, playing against that kind of competition – Obviously, it elevates your game, and you know you take more pride in winning at that time. I guess probably, and it was just a perfect mesh. Uh, and like I said, uh, you know the Tigers—they've only won three World Series in their history, and uh, so you know when they hadn't won six sixty-eight, that's a long time, and then thirty-five or something. So, and like I said, great traditional sports town. So. Um, I, I think the best part about it was the parade. You know, the next day, I mean, just, um, th you know, two, three million people there physically and just uh, the greatest party ever, huh? Uh, I'm sure. And was uh, was Sparky Anderson your manager? Was he your manager yeah. those years? So yeah. You had, what was yeah, he like? I forgot to, yeah. yeah, I forgot to mention Sparky, you know. I had if people laugh or tell you know he was a great manager and all that kind of stuff. He he was he was especially great with the press and and dealing with that. So we didn't have to you know deal so much. He was a positive guy. Wouldn't let that that part of it uh, seep in at all. And you know he he won and with the big red machine in Cincinnati, well known guy, all that kind of stuff. So he had kind of a mystique, and I always told him, and uh, you know, but give me. To put it pretty simply, he didn't win any games for us. You know, he he didn't play, but uh, he was a great, great uh, ambassador uh, for everybody. And um, and and the, like I said, those guys were all uh, in their prime, 20, 30 years old. All came up together, and uh, it was so fun to be part of that because they they deserved that. They um, you know, they, they, we should, we could have won five years in a row. We were that good, uh, six years in a row. And uh, so the atmosphere and the winning and all that kind of stuff, of course, as you know, is contagious and and um, you know, look pretty good after a while. Man down. Man, man down. We lost we lost Daryl. His cat probably knocked it out. The uh it's it's funny watching those back in the early eighties, you had the Kansas Cities, you had Baltimore, Detroit, all these teams that were in it, every year, the Yankees, Red Sox. It was. A, it was, seemed like it was just a battle between the rest of all them and, and trying to get all this stuff done. So I mean, it was. It's amazing seeing that the talent and being able to sustainable. And I'm sure there were some the uh, the managers that went through there. Those guys that put that stuff through was just just amazing. So yeah, just talking about those great teams in, in Detroit. It, it was. It was. Uh, you know, it was a blessing. 
to get to play in all those different venues. And then, you know, uh, God, getting a chance to get in the World Series, just, uh, well, you know how that is. I mean, it's, it's just indescribable how that, uh, you know, changes your life. But at the same time, it's such a great uh, kind of, uh osmosis and a reward and then you know the atmosphere and uh you know what i and i got uh being from southern california we played the padres and uh all the every at the time the padres and the cubs were playing the cubs hadn't won forever and and the padres came back and beat them and and played and you know most of the world wanted the two old teams to be in the world series together uh, Detroit and the Cubs, and uh, and then it worked out that the Padres were in close to my all my family and friends and everybody uh, from Southern California. I ran into a guy who worked at commissioner's office, and I ended up being able to get 73 tickets for the World Series for friends and family, coaches, all those all those things. Uh, it, it 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 was so. Uh, I, get, I you know it wouldn't have happened at Wrigley Field, obviously, and uh, just just to be able to enjoy that with all those people that are responsible for, you know, you getting there and everything else. So, just a uh, uh, you know dream come true, obviously for all of us. But uh, you know, you're sitting in the front yard and not even dare thinking about being in the World Series. But and I was and uh, and winning. And, uh, you know, I, I wear my ring all the time uh, because I tell people, and, 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 you know, it attracts people so much, and they love it and everything. So I go, you know, people, sh because I, I could never have a bad day. So it's like, I, you know, that just putting that on every morning just makes, solidifies it. Uh, uh, you know, I don't know, we're in the sixth, seventh, eighth inning right now, and and I'm going to enjoy everything and try to share as much of it as, as I can with the fans and, and people and what it's like. Did you guys clinch in San Diego or was it in Detroit? Well, no, yeah, we, no, we, we clinched at home. And that's a, you asked about Gibson, you know, he, he had a home run, three run homer off of uh, goose Gossage in the eighth inning, uh, to clinch the last game pretty much. And, uh, so we got to celebrate, you know, for a couple innings kind of, and, uh, that was, that was great in front of your own fans and, um, you know, typical fans afterwards are they're out there tearing up everything, riot, you know, pretty much riot, whatever. You know how that goes, but um, just, just and like I said, that just solidified so much about uh, uh, how how people needed that. You know, how, how much they they wanted to be a part of that, and all of a sudden you got, you know, everybody went to the game. Three million people must have been at that game. I hear that all the time, and that last game, but. Uh, you know, the whole world saw it. It was on TV, and, and, and it was such a, I think, endearing thing for fans all over the country and all over the world for, for Detroit to win and or at least be part of that. So, uh, yeah, clinching at home, oh, my gosh. Uh, just, uh, you know, I mean, that plane flight, would, at, if we'd have been on the road, would have been great, but it was much greater. We didn't have to get on that plane. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, just, the, I mean, but the people stayed forever. You know, just uh, they couldn't get enough of it, and uh, we became instant celebrities. I lived there for for six years, and uh, you know, all of a sudden, you you you've known everywhere and every place, and and people come up and thank you, and I, yeah, it's a great feeling. Yeah, it's what what sports can do to a town and and just to people individually. So you, oh, so, yeah. so you came out. You were drafted by the Braves, correct? What was your first no, year? No, I was actually five, I was drafted five times. I was in the first draft ever, and I was drafted five different times. I finally signed with the Kansas City A's. Uh, back then, they had a draft every six months because they wanted to, you know, they didn't want you going out and and having everybody compete for you. So yeah, I was that was my anyway. Uh, and so I I signed with the Kansas City A's. Uh, and played just uh, briefly with them uh, in the minor leagues and uh, w with uh, Reggie Jackson and Ryder Blue and Raleigh Fingers, our room with a double A, and all, all those great players from all those, you know, the, the dynasty of the early 70s. I was part of that growing up uh, for a couple of months, and then I went to the Marines, and then I came back out, played double A, 
and then I got dra- and then I got Rule Five to the Braves, um, and I played four months in the minor leagues. Never been to spring training, and and because I was on the Triple A roster, I got Rule Five by the Braves, and they had to keep me in the big leagues. Um, so I got there. Uh, 1969, and that year I was up, and they had to send me back and forth. They didn't want they didn't want to send me back. They liked me, so they they kept me on that team. And I was actually there in the '69 where the Miracle Mets beat the Atlanta Braves, that team which was had five Hall of Famers on it: uh, Hank Aaron, Orlando Cepeda, Phil Nico, Hoyt Wilhelm. Uh, and so, so we, and we, you know, we, we were on the other side and because the Mets beat us and then went on to beat the, the, the Orioles in the world series, that great team that I was, you know, I was, I was an extra guy, obviously I was sitting on the bench I was young, I was 21 years old. So, but I got to sit there and watch Hank Aaron and all those guys just mash and learn so much and was so forced to be part of that and then yeah I went down they sent me down the next year and um triple a double a triple a and I hit 360 so they had to bring it back up so it was like it was like a whirlwind and it was so it was so different and you know I played in a different part of the country I grew up in southern Cal I played ended up playing in Atlanta and uh, you know, things were a little bit different back then. It was a smaller, it was a small town actually, and it wasn't really baseball. They liked they like college and high school football, and the fans weren't. Uh, we didn't draw really great all the time, even though we had the best player of all time playing when uh, chasing, you know, Babe Ruth's record in home runs, and uh, so it, it was. Uh, you got and Dusty Baker and I were teammates then we I hit third in front of Hank he hit fifth behind Hank uh back then when then when Hank broke the record and all that stuff I was on base what was that what uh, was that moment like you're standing on first base knowing you you know what's what's at stake here well you know I I I, well Eddie Matthews was my idol growing up and left in here in third base from California and the Hall of Famer one that maybe the best third base all the time whatever uh he was my idol growing up and when I first got to the Braves, he was the hidden coach. He just retired, and he's the hidden coach. You know, what's it like to walk in there with your idol? You know, just uh, just get to meet a guy like that. And here he took me under his wing, and uh, he taught me so much. He, he just uh, he loved me. You know, he, he wanted – he was a new coach, and he just wanted to tell everybody everything, and I happened to be there for that and just – you know how to play, how to act, how to 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 present yourself, and what to expect, and and of course, uh, you know, get the head out and like you used to do, and uh, hit the ball in the air and hit it over the fence, and that was our goal all the time. And so, uh, and I had to, and I watched the, you know, I got to watch Hank every day, and then as he got, you know, he wasn't really known. So much, just uh, Giants MVP and World Champs and batting titles and home run, stolen base titles and and yet he wasn't the the superstar. He wasn't the uh, up there with Mays and Mantle and all those kind of things because he played in Milwaukee and he was playing in Atlanta. And uh, when he got close to seven hundred, all of a sudden I think the world realized and went. Oh, he's the guy that might have a chance to beat Babe Ruth, and and you know you're younger to, to understand the status of Babe Ruth. You know you talk about Elvis Presley, Frank Sinatra, even bigger. Uh, you know he was just an icon of, the, of of sports and and the world and baseball and this bigger than life guy. And uh, you know he he was a hero of the people growing up in the Depression and the World Wars and. So this, I mean, it's just you can't explain how big Babe Ruth was, and then here's some guy coming along that might break his record, and you know somebody, some people took it the right way. You know, it's like Hank hey, always said, "Hey, man, I'm not going to replace Babe Ruth. I'm just going, you know, I'm trying to break his record." 
but some people took it the wrong way. And so he had to go through a lot of that. And, uh, you know, we all know about the prejudice and all that kind of stuff. And he was in this Atlanta. So that got magnified. A bunch of people, same people's now come running around and, oh, you know, you're oppressed. And well, he didn't think anything. <laughs> he wasn't thinking anything like that. He was, you know, he, he played for 20 years already. Um, you know, he, he, he was so, he was the right guy to do it. I, I really feel that way because I, 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 I was teammates with him for five years and, and friends and, and, you know, see how he went about things and just this quiet, uh, supposedly quiet, but then, you know, just, just went about his business and he was so good. He did, he do not just you know, he made mistakes probably, but he was so good. You don't even, you know, you kind of overlook it. And uh, so when he got close to 700, uh, the world discovered him. And all of a sudden, the press is all over. Everything's, oh, what did you eat for breakfast? You know, what did you eat for breakfast? You can hit on one today. You know, did you, eat, did you sleep good last night? You can hit on one today. You know, he had, to, he had to go through all that kind of stuff. And it was probably better that he was in Atlanta because he went in New York or all those places where they just pounded him all the time. But he was such a focused guy, and he was so good. And, um, you know, just, I mean, he realized 755 home runs and, you know, he averaged 39 home runs when back then hit 40 was a big deal. And he averaged 39 home runs his career. I mean, so you just, uh, you know, he holds um, so many records and, you know, total bases and, and RBIs and X, all those kind of things. But, but when he got close to 700, then all of a sudden he was at the spotlight and, um, he added up beautifully. Um, you know, they wanted more of him and all that kind of stuff, but he wanted to win ball games. And, uh, you know, that, that, that was his foe. I mean, of course, you know, he'd won, he won in one world series back uh, with, in Milwaukee. And that, like I said, we had great teams there and, you know, he wanted to go back. He wanted to be part of that again, of course, like we all do. And, and, um, it was such a, I mean, such a great aura to be around because, like I said, the whole world was, was, was trying to get a piece of him. And how did he, you know, how, how did things were? How come he was better than everybody else? And then there was the other people going, you know, the the commissioner Bowie Coon was going to put an asterisk on us. And I was like, why would you bring this down? The whole world wanted to be part of this. I think they all wanted to accept it. Yeah, you know, that that somebody you know this unbreakable Babe Ruth record was gonna be broken, and um, so man, I was hitting third, so ahead of him, and so it was like my focus was like, man, I'm gonna have to get on base every single time. <laughs> you know, I got I got to be on base when he hits it. <clears throat> so you know, I'm I'm gonna have to be on base every time, and you know, and that was, you know, it was a fun thing, of course, and it was, and sometimes it's disappointing, but of course, until he got to you know seven thirteen, you know, it wasn't gonna be a reality. But you know, I look back down, I was I was on base for a seven hundred, and for a seven thirteen and fourteen and fifteen, um. You know, I laugh about it now, but back then it was like, man, desperation. I, I got to be on base. So, uh, and then it was like, well, man, you know, I had a few home runs at the time. I was like, oh, man, if I hit a home run, am I going to? So, anyway, I had fun with it and being blessed. And I was on the time he hit 715. And and it was really, you know, the scenario was two outs and, uh, you know, hit a ball that didn't know was going to go out anyway. And, so I was running as hard as I could from first and, you know, score on the ball that didn't go out. And of course, when I, about the time I got to second base, I realized it went out and just pandemonium, uh, you know, it's just another one of those moments. It was better in the World Series, but just pandemonium. And, the, and the, the thing I thought about is that, hey, don't miss the bases. You know, that would made me really famous if I'd have missed third base, you know, that. 
out of a chest to the umpires. <laughs> I think if I'd have done it. But, you know, I wanted to go around there so fast because I, I wanted to be the first guy on plate to congratulate him. You know, was, we were friends. And he was, you know, he, he just, he, I mean, what he was going through and all the experience, it was so great. So I ran as fast as I can to get to home plate and ended up at the end. Uh, you know, sometimes they don't show all the way to the end when you get to home plate, but I, I pushed everybody out of the way. And they kind of they kind of let me do that. Uh, so I wasn't the first guy to shake his hand because how many times you ever see, you know, the whole Dodger infield? Uh, you know, he went around Garvey too fast, but, uh, you know, he kind of saluted him and then Lopes and Russell and say, oh, I'll say he didn't shake his hand for somewhere. I don't know why. But anyway, and our third base coach, uh, so Connie Ryan. And then so, and I was the first guy, the first guy to kind of be, you know, his teammate and, and all that. And then, you know, the place went wild. I mean, it was stopped the game for a long time. Um, you know, you see all the iconic pictures and everything. And, 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 you know, I think everybody was in shock at it for a while because it did happen. Like I said, and what people thought of Babe Ruth and the records and everything. And then it was, then it was, it, it was uh, just complete joy, and and it was great because people found out what kind of guy he is. You know, you know, we have those guys that just, just quiet, are, yeah, yeah, they're, they're yeah. Quiet and, and, and you know, just classy, yeah. just just so classy, and just uh, just you know, wonderful. They'd be wonderful, wonderful friends of people if they weren't doing what they do. And he he's certainly one of those. Did he say anything when he crossed home plate? When he saw you stand there, did he say anything, or was it just? <laughs> it, it never looked like he sh really showed any emotion. You know, you see the Not the iconic well, picture yeah. of the two guys coming and patting him on the back. I'm sure that probably scared him. And then coming home, it, you know, Hank just never seemed like yeah. he was he was uh, without fanfare, really. You know, not I mean, today's generation wouldn't understand it. Just he was just he went about his business, right? Yeah, no, yeah, no, of course it was. You know, when it was well, it was taboo back then to to kind of show up your opponent. You know what I mean? It's like hey, the first thing they, uh, you know, to, hey, run around the base like you've done it every day. You know, and, and that was, and he was the epitome of that, although he seemed quiet, you know, to people. I mean, obviously in the clubhouse and everything else, he was, you know, when, when Hank spoke, everybody listened, they, and of course. And he was, he he could get a, a you know, emotional a little bit and all that stuff, but but I think that was part of his whole thing. He he learned that uh, you know this is the best way to do things and act that way, and that's the with respect to the game and respect of everything else. And and uh, he was always there for everybody. Obviously, he was always one of the guys. He had this great big beautiful smile. He was butted a lot of jokes, and and uh, you know it's like so he had ammunition on all of us too. Uh, he was he was one of those guys, but remember back then the publicity. You know, you didn't see everybody all the time. You didn't really kind of get to know the players then. You know, TV was you know was coming in, and, but it wasn't like it is now today. You know, uh, uh, you know we care about yeah. The one time we got on TV is if you know maybe sports ESPN, which didn't even come in until after this. So there wasn't any sports center. You couldn't see stuff afterwards, and you didn't really know what was going on anyplace else. Um, and it was and it was great that that people did get to know him like that. And of course, like I said, I think he was chosen to do this. None of the other, uh, you know, Willie Mays was much more gregarious, outgoing, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, and, and Mickey Mantle, and all, all, the, all those guys that were supposed to win, uh, or supposed maybe supposed to do it, um, were 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 much different personalities and and i think that's why hank was pretty much chosen to be able to represent and do this so uh and and he certainly did and i i think he's never really got his due <clears throat> i mean when when you hold basically all the records in baseball <laughs> you know you would think he might structure might be higher but of course like i said he didn't grow up and you know he didn't play in new york and L.A. or Chicago, and so it, uh, people didn't get to enjoy his achievements as much as they should have. What did you say to him when we crossed home plate? Oh, my God. Uh, I don't know, because <laughs> I don't think, you know, I was, I mean, it was, oh, you, you know, he made you feel like you were doing it with him. So I didn't really say anything, and I look back now, and I, I see the, the films now, and 
I tousled his hair. Yeah. Here, I, here I'm, a, yeah. you know, I'm 25, 20, and, you know, here's a veteran man, and, you know, that He just broke baseball's just... immortal record, <laughs> all right, and you're standing there at 25, and here comes Hank. Yeah, and, um, you know, but everybody did, you know, he was that, I, it was, it, no, not everybody did, I guess I'm the only one that really did it, but everybody, uh, you know, he, he made it so, a joy for everybody, so, uh, I didn't really say anything. Uh, it was I, it was kind of what I did most of the time. You know, the other 250 times I was around him, going around the bases like that, and just you know, just, you didn't uh, give the, the, you could have given him the silent treatment, right? And just walked away. Hey, good job, and walked away. Oh, yeah, that would have been good. <laughs> I'm sure there was a couple of knuckleheads that thought about that, but that didn't go over too good. <laughs> because, and, and you know, people jumped on the field. You know, like you said, the, you know, we kind of overlooked the supposedly it was uh, supposed to be security and all that kind of stuff. You know, I look back and then I go, well, obviously there wasn't. And it was, you know, it was kind of scary. Those two, uh, you know, kids jumped on the field, got all the way to the, and no, nothing happened to them. I mean, there wasn't anybody chasing them or anything. And yeah, so it was, you know, there was, there was that underlying thing that was going on at the time too. And, and I think I look back at that and I go, yeah, he kind of, you know, didn't understand how strong and I'm, you know, he kind of forearmed one of those kids too. So, <laughs> uh, it, it's just, uh, this guy's bigger in life and, and, uh, man, magic moments to be around him. And, and then, and then after that, you know, the celebration, it was great. His parents, his mom came down the field you know, all these, all the, everybody, it was, you know, presidents were there. It, it was just this, uh, it couldn't have been a stage moment because, you know, in baseball, you can't guarantee. I mean, oh, I mean you know, what would have happened if he got hurt? He had 7-14 to 30, or, you know, what he, and uh, uh, so it's just a continuation, I guess, of that. I uh, tousled his hair, kind of <laughs> gave him a hug, got the hell out of the way, and and sat back and watched uh, how everything went down, which is kind of the joy we get to do when we plan, don't we? We get to be part of the moment, and then we can stand back and watch how people react, and that's that's a great part of it. Yeah, because that's that's a lot of pressure, especially especially on him that moment. Oh. You know, a black man in the South, and you know, I heard you know well, stories yeah. of what he had to deal with going on the road and everything else, and you know, just for. It, it just, you know, it seemed like he was stoic in the entire, through that process. Was, you know, the guys came around, pat him on the back. He just, hey, you know, and then just kept running. It wasn't as if it was, you know, there was no bat flip and, and chest pounding or anything else. You, like you said, it's just like the other 714 times he's done it before. He just ran around the bases and, and did his job. But, you know, the amount of pressure, I mean, playing in a World Series is, is one. But when you've got that, I mean, the weight of, yeah. you know, just – you know, with, you know, with how the, the world was at that time, you know, transitioning through, you know, you know, segregation and everything else. And you're in the South and here's this man doing this, you know, it's, it, I'm you know, statues need to be everywhere of that man, just for what oh, he, uh, the weight no that he carried. And, and you make such a great point. And I'm sorry, I, I kind of maybe glossed over that point, but you're right. Of, of course, we kind of know about what was going on. The teammates kind of knew. I mean, it was out there, but it wasn't as big as, the, you know, it wasn't, you know, there was, everybody wasn't coming down on him. There was very few people. It was kept private like he wanted to kind of do. But like you said, he had to deal with the president and then go out and perform. You know, that's one of the things that, that um, uh, you know, we, we, you know, obviously as, as uh, we weren't teammates, but we played. And we're and we are teammates because of that. And and you know all the everybody that played today in the major leagues is to me is the same. And and you know because I, I know what everybody went through to get there. And and then you and then when you get there and you get to play around these icons, of course, and all these people. And then and then this moment, you're right. The pressure. Um, didn't stop him. It kind of accelerated him. I mean, if you look back and he, I mean, he never had a big lull, you know, and they were like, Oh shoot, the pressure's getting to him. Uh, no, you know, it's, it's amazing. You know, he hit a home run every other day. 
<laughs> All right. You think about it. That's kind of, uh, you know. So, and then and then having to go through the spotlight, and then having to be for some people to be the symbol and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and uh, he didn't he didn't he didn't play that way. He didn't feel that way. He did. You know, he was dealing with something he had to deal with, and uh, at the same time, he had to go out there and perform in front of everybody. You know, we we I you know. We got to do it in front of everybody. Yeah. You know, we had 40, 50,000 people, millions of people watching you. Millions of people listening on there. I mean, there, where other do you go to work and have that happen every day? And, you know, I kind of, I, you know, it's like, oh, football and basketball and people. It's like, we do it every day. You know, it's it's not something you ever get really used to. I think I I didn't. I loved it. I enjoyed it. It was like performing in a way until the game started, and then it was, and then it was competing, and uh, you know, and and everybody got to share that with you. I guess you say it that way. You know, you hear the the booze and you hear the uh, the cheers and. And all you care about is what you, your teammates think of you, and um, I, I think that's that's something he showed us to rally. You know, I know of course we rallied around him no matter what, uh, made it as comfortable as we could for him, and he he gave us the reward. You know, one of the th uh, so that year in '73, so he ended the season seven fourteen, or yeah, you know, and or seven thirteen. And it was like pre-planned. I really think I don't. You know, I mean, you can't turn on and on and off. Obviously, he had a home run, but he ended up seven thirteen. So the whole world had to wait the whole off season with all the controversy, with with the asterisk, with the freak. Now, what he got to me at bed, so babe was his. But I think he put it in that so that everybody had a stew in it. And then he comes right back, and of course, he hit seven fourteen opening day. <laughs> It's like a TV show, right? You wait the se well, oh, the season yeah. ended. Gosh, you we got to wait yeah. for the next thing to figure out what happens. <laughs> yeah, and then opening day, and 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 then we had another game in Cincinnati, and Eddie is lifelong buddy, his teammate, their manager. You know, he wasn't going to play him because uh, you know he wanted. And we played two games in Cincinnati. That was it. They were going to play like ten games in Atlanta. So obviously, you know, we wanted to break it at home and all that kind of stuff, of course. And uh, I mean, the commissioner called and said, "You got to play him." And that wasn't that wasn't something you tell Eddie Matthews to do anything. So there was that controversy, there was that pressure. Uh, and then, uh, you know, we go home, first game at home, <laughs> he, he breaks the record. It's like uh, it just. Um, you know, with the pressure I learned from him and he talked about, oh, that's not pressure. It's, it's, it, you put, you put your own pressure by how you achieve things. You know, I mean, you don't have pressure if you're not in a situation like this. So, you know, he embraced that, I guess, you know, obviously, like you said, he didn't show outwardly, he didn't show it. He just went ahead and went, hey, watch me. And, uh, you know, you didn't need to bat flip the bat, yeah. man. You know, he had the whole like, winter to actually probably just probably just absorb all oh, that pressure. Oh right. And then I, mean, I wish. It, yeah. And then you go, go into spring okay. where he was able just to, hey, whatever. I was, you know, it, the, I think tying it was probably the biggest thing. And then just getting to it. It was just a matter of, heck, if he went up there and swung a thousand times as hard as he could just to break the record. then yeah. But maybe it seems like yeah. he just went that winter time. It gave him a chance just to let the dust settle on that pressure and go into spring, knowing, <laughs> you know, it's it's here. But you know what? I thought about it all winter. Right now, we're just gonna go have fun. Well, well, right. And I, it, wouldn't it be great to be able to go back to that and find out what how he really, you know, whether I swear to God, this is the, the, you know, he he did. If he could, if anybody could do it, he did. He put the, he he, yeah. He stopped at seven thirteen. Now. One of the th he he was so it, he was so into it into the t winning and all that kind of stuff or of course like we all are but but he was so seven thirteen was his fortieth home run now the, and David Johnson had had forty three home runs and I ended up with forty one and Willie started to 
hit 44 that year. So there was four guys at 40. And Hank was, we got to look back, and Hank was 38. You know, he, I mean, he, nobody kind of talked about that. You know, you know, so he was in, you know, as as they all think about us, you know, we fall apart. But, of course, he didn't. But, and so he hit that 713. And for us, for Davey and I, we had been kidding him since we got to 40. I mean, we'd never been to 40 before. Davey was a star before in Baltimore, but he'd only hit 20. And then when he got over with the Braves and Eddie Matthews said, hey, hit the ball to the fence. You know, I don't care what you hit. Let's go. So he ended up having this great, great year, and I hit 40, 41. And and so now we had a chance to be the only – the first time a teammate, three teammates hit 40 home runs in one year. I mean, I mean yeah. of course, that was the first time, and it's only happened to maybe two or three times since then. So, so of course, as teammates and even younger, you know, he had allowed us to kid him all the time. You know, it's like, come on, old man, do the catch up. The only way we're getting all famous for you to, you know, and so he embraced that. And, and you know, after he hit 713, every day, before and after, and he, back then it didn't ever happen like this, but now, how you know, the press is all around all the time. But um, every day, you know, he started having 200, 300 all around the world press before, you know, you can hit one today. And then afterwards, like, well, what happened? Or, you know, how'd you feel? And, and you know, all that crazy stuff. Um so after he hit the, the, and we, you know, we're part of a record the first time ever happened. He brings us into the press conference, Davey and I. It's like, I want you guys to come in there with me. And I was like, wow, that, all right, 713, man, the world's going crazy. And here he he brings it, not drags us, he invites us to come in there, takes us in the press conference. Oh, man, that was a shock. And the, you know, people were like, what are you guys doing here? And he goes, you know, I'm so proud to be part of this first time ever. And, you know, it's, you know, said great things and the you know, teammates and all this kind of stuff. And we're just standing there. And um, and he goes, you know, I want to talk about that because I think that's really important. And, you know, it's never happened before. And, you know, everybody's going, oh, you've got to be crazy kidding. And uh, he goes, so, you know, that's what I want to talk about. Well, the first question is, why are you going to break the record? And then another question, and he goes, okay, I told you. I wanted to talk about this. It's really important to me. These are great friends and great teammates. And walked out of the press conference. I mean, the, you know, it was it was surreal, kind of. Uh, but he really meant that. And um, so... You make some extra special, of course, and to realize and go, you know, that nobody's, I mean, nobody's that good. <laughs> and nobody can count on that. But he sincerely made us feel, you know, like never before on top of the world. So something we'll never forget. And, but he meant it. And uh, that's, you know, that's the kind of guy he was. So, um, and I think, no, looking back later on, going, oh yeah, you just brought us in there so you get rid of the press, you know, so you can get Callaway. <laughs> but and he does big smile out, but and uh, but it's just a, you know it's a, such a special moment to be part of that too. That's um, and, and then like I said, then he comes back and he you know he's your friend, he's your teammate, he's your man. It was you know what was it like? Uh, <laughs> uh, you know. I don't know. Everything was first. Everything was new. Everybody realized, man, I get to watch this guy every day. You know, this guy's hitting behind me. I'm getting, oh, and everybody go, yeah, your pitches are hitting. And I was like, yeah, but I'm, you know, my goal was to get on base for Hank or hit the ball in the park. That's what I was told to do. And, you know, I led the league in walks every year, too, in front of him. So I got to score a lot. And, um, you know, I got to be in base for seven fifteen. Yeah. Doesn't get any better than that. No, not at all. And you know, just you know, those are the memories. You know, especially you, you get to cherish and be a part of because that that's history, right? I I never knew you were the, you were on first base. You know, that's all. It's you're the asterisk, right? You're just the guy that <laughs> that was on there at, the, at that time. It's just oh, that was Daryl Evans. Yeah. That was on. Oh, that was really? on first base. How'd that happen? Yeah. yeah, no kidding. Yeah. So you know, it's like yeah, and and you know. It's a, it's always fun as we get, you know, we can embellish the stories a little bit, or, or you know, our memory gets a little jammed. But, but just it, it's, and I guess the beauty of it, um, 
I was on base because I'm supposed to tell the people the story so that they realize how, what a great person and, of course, the best player I am in. You know, I mean, did you get a base hit or did you walk when you got on, on base? Pardon? Did you get a hit before Hank 715 or did you get a or No, no, well, that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hit a ball good. I hit a ball good off the mound. And back then, I was one of the first guys. They started shifting a little bit. And Bill Russell, okay, it hit off the mound kind of bad. I hit it pretty good. But uh, and it was to his left and uh, kind of took a funky hop on him, stayed down a little bit. And and because of my speed, he was hurrying and, you know, but but they gave me an error. So, no, it, it, I, I did. I hit the ball, you know, in normal circumstance and hit the mound, it, it would have been a base hit. So I always try to embellish that, make sure people know that, uh, but who cares? But, yeah, I mean, it's kind of, it's a lot better to go, yeah, how'd you get on? Oh, I hit a, I hit a rocket, I got a hit, or, well, I got on because of an error. So. I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't bring that part of the story up too often. Yeah, your your so. part, your number seven fifteen was a two run homer. You were the other guy. That's all you got to say, right? You were the, you were the other guy. I got on, on somehow. Yeah, yeah really. exactly. Right. Well. That's what you were supposed to do. And you know, <laughs> that you know, that's the stuff that you know that I as a kid I wasn't I wasn't born yet, but what, you know, hearing stories and seeing that stuff, um, you know, and you got like you said, you had Eddie Matthews, you know, teaching you. He said that helped helped you out throughout your career, and I'm sure Hank did as well, teaching you. Um, you know, you talk about the Hall of Fame numbers and stuff. You know, do you're, you know, you're you're one of those guys people talk about a lot. Is Daryl Evans Hall of Fame worthy? And you know, the way the way things are set up nowadays, you, you don't know what numbers do what, right? As far as of how baseball set up. So, as per Daryl Evans, does Daryl Evans deserve to be in the Hall of Fame? Nah, well, you know what? Like you said, I, I, I over the years, I've, you know, even for somebody to talk about that at first. And it was like, well, you know, uh, okay. But and when I look back and I go, you know, when I retired, or when I didn't get to retire when they when they didn't give me a uniform anymore. So I didn't really get to retire. Um, but, you know, it's 22nd all the time on home runs. So, I mean, I got to look back and I go, well, you know, I'm proud of that. But, you, you know, the, probably the most proud I am of anything is I'm, I think I'm still 32nd in games played all time, which is, which is, you know, people go, I, you know, underrated and maybe should be here and maybe should that. Well, when, you know, none of us played to get to, and all, I mean, that was a dream just to play, of course. And then, and then it's like, you know, play the next year, play the next year. And I, I got to do that. They, they, they couldn't take the uniform away from me. And that to me is the, maybe the reason why, that yeah, I get considered to be that. It's fun. It's always fun. And and um, uh, you know, I've talked to a couple of the guys recently that I think should be in Hall of Fame too. Uh, I don't. I think they. One of them maybe expects it, wishes it would happen. I, obviously, it changed your life. I guess I don't know. Um, you know, there's still that Hall of Fame thing where, you know, we're good friends with Fergie Jenkins. You know, we see Fergie all the time. You know, but he, nobody kind of goes, oh, well, you're a Hall of Famer and you're the greatest. Uh, they don't really say that. Uh, you know, so I, I guess there's tears to that. Um, the press says, you know, if he cared about it as much, then the press wouldn't be voting. No, I got to say it a nice way, I guess. I mean, how in the hell does the press get to vote when they've never played? And they've never seen the guys that are in there already. How the hell does that work? So, But it's always worked that way. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know the thing, uh, you know, the, the guys that didn't get in until after they died, you know, and now there's a few guys that just got in, of course, you know, and they're and they play and play for 30, 40 years. I mean, it's such a ludicrous thing, as far as I'm concerned. The Hall of Fame, uh, and I think what it's become is that there's tears to that even. And but I look back and I go, you know what? You can't control anything because 
remember the first time they ever had the votes, they only put seven guys in. I mean, they left out some of the best players of all time. And the guys that got in weren't even unanimous choices. So it's a rigged system. Um, it's fun to be part of it and the conversation. But um, it doesn't rule my world. And the cool thing about it is um, I, get, I get a lot of people... Uh, of course, to, to talk about it, and I guess that's that. Uh, you know, that's good enough, and I love it. And uh, just to be considered, man, is uh, you know. I, and I enjoyed the game so much, and I improved the game so much, and I was around these fantastic, you know, teachers or whatever they are, mentors for you. Um, you know, so. Um, they I, I I took as much as I could out of the game, and uh, the game gave me the greatest life ever. Um, looking back and going, you know, what other job could you go to work and enjoy it more the next day than the, the looking forward to the next day more than you did last day? And for me, it's like, man, I Hank just said seven fifteen. And the next day was going to get better. So the game, the game, uh, you know, it has a structure and all that kind of stuff, and and maybe at the top. But uh, like you said, you know, people mention it enough. It's it's such a, the most flattering thing I could ever imagine. And um, you know, it 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 would be great to consider. But I was one of those guys. Those guys that are in all of fame and my teammates and everything, they considered me that. And even afterwards, you know, I got I got a chance to every I played in all the old timers games, you know, at the All Star game, which used to be great. You know, that was I mean, that's where you get to see all the other guys. And I was always a big part of that. So um I can't thank people enough for that. Um, every place I played, the uh, you know, you get recognized, uh, and you get to be around the fans and all that kind of stuff. So, um, I guess my family and everybody else, of course, uh, I would too, uh, feel great about it. But um, you know, it's fun to talk about it. I mean, you know, and you run into other guys, you know, Dale Murphy, or you know. And you see what they did to Roger Maris and, and you know, different guys. There's a lot more guys that be in it. And uh, maybe, and, you know, as people talk about, well, there's some guys that shouldn't be in it. It's like, well, how do you know? They don't play. They weren't out there like us, were they? We know, as you know, we know which guys in that other dugout are the best players. Yeah. And that's the thing. We no, have yeah, zero I mean, There's no doubt. There's no, there's no, there's no, uh, oh, this guy's okay. This guy, no, the, you know, the, and so, you know, that was my goal every day to be one of those guys. And, uh, and I got it. I got to do that a, a few times. And, and so that's, you know, that's my reward, man. Um, I enjoyed going up to see my teammates and, and, you know, I had a bunch of teammates in the hall of fame and, and just just their joy, obviously, for recognition. But um, yeah, it, it's it's a great thing. I I, I got to, the first time I ever went to the ceremony was with Trammell and, and Morris, and it was so striking because I didn't realize it's just kind of out in the middle of no. I mean, it's out in the middle of nowhere. I knew that, but and there's just a stage and all the guys that are in there up there, and um, and then. People come from all over the country, all over the world, to enjoy that. You know, their their guy, or their or wasn't their guy. They're just there to enjoy baseball so much. So, uh, to be considered, be part of that. That that's that's a that's a wonderful thing. I got I got a ring, and you know, I got the memories, and uh, there's uh, I couldn't have planned my life better. I mean, I'm so I've been so blessed. And at the same time, getting to, you know, just like you, I got to see you. I got to see you before. And you stood out, and it was so great. And, you know, we talked about that when you were with the blue. What? Blue hands. Yeah. That's cool, yeah. Blue hands. Yes, sir. That's it. 
Yeah. And seeing, seeing the future and seeing how it was and seeing how, what people thought of you and what thought people thought of uh, 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 people and what they, and how good you have to be to do what you, and you know, we're that fraternity that we have. Amen. That's better than the hall of fame. Yeah, it is. Cause the memory, we, that's why we, we play sports in general. It's, um, that's, I'm going to be a hall. No, I, we play it because we love doing it. Right. And, you know, the generations are different, but you got to, you know, see and be a part of history and see things. And, and the same thing with me. We just, that's why we do it. We, and we're able to sleep at night knowing, did I ever not play in a World Series or make, no, but it, I can go to, what well, you said, you can go to bed at night because of the relationships you've built. You know, we see each other when we do these golf outings and we see guys all over the place. And that's what it's about. It's because there's only a select few of us that have done it, you know, 20,000 maybe. And then even the smaller group that's, you know, even Hall of Fame worthy. Right. And you're in that conversation of doing both of where they were able to do it. So, you know, that's that's the beauty of it. You know, you're able you have fun with it, the relationship you build, the the things you see. And like you said, you, you couldn't ask for anything more. No, uh, you know, those those times we get together, you know, they, we, we went just a month ago and, you know, we were at the golf and briefly get to talk to everybody. But it's but it's it doesn't matter. You know, when you, with the, I was like, when I got that back in the next day and I was like, oh man, I got to see that. And, oh yeah. We talked about this. It, it, you know, it's, it's just that instant joy that comes back to you. And, um, you know, we're in a group that, um, and, 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 and that baseball to me, baseball is, um, it's the greatest game ever, of course, but it's also the most beloved game. And, you know, we, it's like, oh no, football's bad. There'll be more people like football. But, 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 listen, we play every day. See, no, none of the other sports. I mean, look at basketball. They got to have, well, they got to have days off now. You know, they play three times a week, twice a week. Yep. Oh, it's a lot harder. No, it's not harder. No, it's not. You know, but the great thing about baseball is that whether you do good or bad, you got to come back to work the next day. And you have to learn how to do that. And we had to learn how to do that by going through the process from you being at Wilmington and then going to the pro at ball and then learning that where there's not the fanfare. You weren't getting fanfare in the minor leagues. You weren't. I mean, I mean when I was playing, man, nobody, nobody knew who we were. You know, we all seen Bull Durham and all that kind of stuff. That's the way it was most places. Nobody cared. You know, the only time you were talked to is that some guy is yelling at you or, you know, nobody cared who you were, where you were until you made it. And that was the gratification is that because you had to compete against everybody in the world. You know, the baseball has become such a world thing now. Now you got to compete against all those people to get to where you were. And, and, and you know, back when I played, back when you played, you had to earn it. You know, it seems like now it's nah, they push certain guys and, I guess they kind of always did that a little bit, but but that was because they earned what they got. And uh, so, you know, when you're part of that group, you know, um, I don't know this guy. I, you know, I watch the games. I, you know, I don't know half the players, of course, because you know we've never seen them before. Whatever, ever they come out and you go, but I know they had to go through the same process we did. And so that is the ultimate in respect as far as I'm concerned. I can't say, well, you didn't earn your thing. But when you did earn it, you got to be in a, in a elite company that, that takes no prisoners, that doesn't, that doesn't give, doesn't let you – nobody feels sorry. Nobody lets you go ahead. Nobody lets you get ahead. They couldn't anyway. You know, it's like it's boy, they throw the ball down the middle so we can hit the ball park. Well, we, we know that doesn't matter. It doesn't work. Uh, so, you know, that's kind of like with, with Hank, it's like the, the pitchers that were trying, they were trying to get him out. They weren't throwing a ball down a Miller to be the guy that, right. They all, I talked to, you know, so many of them It's like, no, of course not. I was trying to get the guy out and that's what advances us. So it's like, no, there was always, you always had to overcome something in a strange situation in a different place with no money. You know, no, I mean, back then, we, I mean, you know, even you in the minor leagues, you, you know, you weren't comfortable and, and, and you were still feeling like, okay, Hey man, you know, if I get hurt, I'm done. Well, I mean, that fear. And then, and then the, you know, if I have a bad week, I'm gone. So, you know, we don't, we don't care about pressure. No. That's pressure. That was pressure. Like, 
oh man, I got to call my parents. And hey, I'm coming home on tomorrow. That would have been that was the pressure going on. So when you get beyond that point, it's uh, it all becomes joy, and and you want to show everybody the professionalism and how it works, and you get to be around these guys that have done it before. And you know what's one of the great things that I remember back. And you know, of course, the players kid you and all that stuff. You know, and rookies and all. That. Of course they did. But you know what? The first thing they all told me so, hey, listen. You better do what we tell you to do, and you better learn how to play this game as as good as you can because, you know what, you're part of our team, and we're only as good as the worst guy on this team. So you better deal, you better, you better deal with that. And it was like, so they were giving, and they were mentoring, and they were all this stuff that I think doesn't get out there. I think a lot of that people don't realize. You know, it's competing, but at the same time, the people at the top that are gone past that, part are, are your biggest mentors and you know, they always told me hey man pass it along and i think that's we get more joy out of that what else in in the world in, in our country do we pass along that more than baseball yep you know i tell people all the time i go so every day there's over a million people to pay to watch a baseball game a million every day, not just on Saturday or Sunday. No, every day. The minor leagues, the college. And how many more people watch it on TV? Millions more for free. Millions more listen. Even still now people listen on the radio. Where it used to be, that's what that's how you had to imagine what it was like and see what it was like. And then when you when the, when you had to play and deal with it. And then you're like, oh, well, I wouldn't really, really, I didn't know. Okay, well, what am I going to do? I can't call somebody and go, hey, help. It's like, nah, you get to be, you get to be put in a situation where you find out about yourself and you find out about your, the, the rest of the country. I mean, how wonderful it was for us to go around. We've been all over the country, parts of the world. And people love baseball. <laughs> it's great. Oh, yeah, you know, I, 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 when I went, I, I got to go over in Europe a couple of times with, with baseball and all that kind of stuff. And, and, I, and I realized, you know, I went to Detroit. People were wearing tiger hats because that old English D has been around for 150 years. And it's, it's an icon or it's a, it's a symbol around the world. You know, like Yankees, of course, and, you know, Red Sox kind of now, I guess, but, and maybe Dodgers, but, it, it was like that so so you know people love it and you get to do it well uh, we got to do it yeah i mean we we got to do it every day and and laugh and cry and <laughs> and play through lots of adversity man lots of pain lots of you know i don't feel good today but uh, well hey you know i can't hold the bat but hey don't pretend like you didn't like you don't, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, we all had, that's just a part of it, right? You knew what yeah, our limits and, are. And our own guys know that. Yep. You know, only our own guys know that. You know, yep. our family maybe, but our, our own guys know that, and they appreciate that. And that, there's nothing better than that. No, you're right. And then we don't think about it now until, you know, when you're that age, what our bodies will feel like now, right? Because some <laughs> of the days we feel like we're 80 years oh, old. Wait, wait. Oh, wait, you know, I, I'm, I am almost 80. Ah, see, so, you can still go out and play golf, Darren. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. Well, you know what? Uh, yeah, it's all relative. Yeah. It's like being out there among the guys. That's what it's all about. That's what's the fun. And 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 you guys, you know, you, maybe 10 years ago, you laughed at me more playing golf. Now it's like, oh, he's an old guy, so we, we, we'll let up on him a little bit. So, you know, I have that, have that in my back pocket. Yeah. So, you know, if I hit one good, then you guys are praising me. Used to be, it was like you're laughing at me. So, you know, that's... that's you're up there with Claude now, aren't you? Good old Claude Osteen. Oh, my God. No, no, I'll never catch him. No, no, no. <laughs> Claude's still is he's that. 100, he's 180, isn't he's, he? <laughs> probably. Gosh, he played back during the Depression, I think, didn't he? Hell, I play, I play, <laughs> hey, I faced him. Did you? I, yeah, man. He was one of the best. Of course, he was one of the best pitchers in baseball. He got overlooked here in Colfax and Drysdale, man. Yeah. This guy was, this guy was, well, look his record up, you know? I mean, oh, you yeah. know, he won, I don't know. I think he won 200 games. Nobody's ever going to win 200 games again. No. 
And, the, and the, you know, we don't talk about baseball so much, but yeah, it's it's a shame. It's like you got to be kidding me. These guys are warriors. Yeah. Holy shit. That was three man rotations too, wasn't it? Pardon? That was three man rotations. Right. Well, that, four. Uh, four. Three or four. I, yeah. I don't know. I, I didn't play. That was that was that was a little <laughs> bit before me. Three man. But you know, but you're right. Those four man rotations. And they and they well, thirty complete games. They did. I mean, you know, like I, I, you, well, you played out for most of the time. I played. You know, I, I had a joy of playing first and third all the time because you know I could go to the mound and all the visits and you hear all the, you know, all the, the you know, the pitchers. Who the, what the hell are you doing out here? Get your ass back in the dugout. You ain't got anybody better than me in the bullpen. So get your ass back in the dugout. I'm play, I'm finishing this game. Yeah. That was just a given. You know, there wasn't any, oh, I'm kind of tired, Skip, can you get me out of here? Yeah, you would, are you kidding me? No one would dare say that, but, you know, it's kind of changed the, yeah, say, help me, save me. Uh, so, you know, that's why we never like pitchers anyway. You know, not, they pretend like they're athletes. They're not athletes. Well, I mean, they're, they're, like, they're like football players. They play once a week. Yeah. And they golf the other four yeah. days. They golf the rest well, of the time. Yeah, right. Yeah. And they're not that good golf either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Yeah. yeah. Well, Daryl, man, I appreciate you, you coming on here with this. This is fun. I like listening to these stories. You you know, this era of, of you know, you uh, coached hey. and everything else. I know you got therapy this yeah. morning, don't you? Is it for the yeah. was it for the knee, the back? For my it? knee, man. For my knee. It's like, you know what? Another thing is, man, I was so lucky. I was never on a disabled list. I, I are. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, I get you know, ribs broken, fingers, and you play you play with I played with all those because of the fear of hey, why would I let anybody else get in there? You know, we all know the Wally Pip story and Lou Gehrig. The right? I mean, yeah. that was the fear. I mean, that wasn't a fear we play with, but it was a reality play with. Go, hey man, I, I, hey, I can still play at fifty percent. Yeah, you know, let me, let me, you know, and they let you. Yep, they got to you drag know, us out of the them, lineup. But they right? let you. They drag you out of the lineup. No, right? Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, th- why is it that we? One of the things is I played, uh, you know, one hundred and sixty games, one hundred fifty. A year. I mean, and, and and I don't get it. It's like so many guys are hurt now, relatively. But the pitchers especially, but the, the other players. You know, they got these injuries that we never really, well, I don't know if we had them, I guess. We still played. And it's like, why wouldn't, that, why wouldn't baseball go to uh, Cal Ripken and Steve Garvey and Billy Williams and Tony Perez and me and other people that played, Greg Nettles, and why wouldn't they come to us and ask us, how the hell did you play so long? How did you play? How did you have this? They don't want to talk to us. Are, are you kidding me? Why, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you find out? How did we get to, and that's, you know, it's great to be putting, not put myself in that group, but it's great to be in that group. Isn't it? It was like, so, and it would get us to wonder, I don't know. Let's figure this out so that other guys can deal with it. But no, they don't do that. And it, it, it's, it's, you know, they're pushing us out of the game. You know, they, our expertise. I mean, you know, Fergie won 300 games, complete games. Wouldn't you Wouldn't you have all the, you know, he coached for a while and all that. Wouldn't you have all the organization, the pitchers and everything? How ah, the hell did you do that? But they don't want to know that. And that's that's the shame of the game right now. To me, the big thing is that it's it's artificial in a lot of ways, and and they're not going in the right direction. Once you find that out, do they really? What do the fans really want? A speeded up game? I know I never understood this. Every concert I ever gone to, I want that concert to last longer. Don't you? Yep. I mean, yeah. I mean, we don't go to the concert. And go, hey, we're gonna leave in the, you know, let's leave before the best part comes. But it's like there's a the, the and the media is again, ah, oh, the games are too long and they should be cut down. It's like well, that's the beauty of the game. Because in baseball, you don't know when the most important part of the game's gonna and everybody gets exact same. There's no clock, there's no running out time. It's like, oh man, they get to hit in the ninth too. Shoot. 
right? Yep. And so, but what's that perpetuated by the media? What's that? Because they they miss their deadlines or oh, I'm tired. I watch the games all the time. I these are boring. Yeah, it's boring, and, and it's a million people itself. watch it every. Yeah. Millions of people watch it every day. Pass it along. Everybody can play catch. Everybody could get out there and be part of that and kind of get a feeling. And they got time to make their strategy moves. Or what would I be doing? What would I be thinking there? Yeah, well, yeah. We it's going to sink itself, and that's what we, you know, just yeah, just let it, it see it, what it, happens. It, well, if we let it, but yeah. you know, yeah, I guess we we got we got to get we got to get a couple. of guys buy some teams yeah or at least get you know they they got to get some power in there but you know they push them out even too so uh you know we it's it's like i guess it's like politics we get to, to cut off the head right now yeah it needs to be yeah so it'll be interesting to see where see where this goes in the next few years of how how baseball is being being run and everything else so um you know for sure the they're pushing that the older generation out there are some some of the old school guys there but you know, we just got to keep fighting for our great game, you know, and see what yeah, happens. Yeah, man, so. that's for sure. And whenever we get together and get to do stuff like this, or when we get together, there all the thing, people see that. You know, that's how people always ask, oh, man, you went to alumni. Oh, yeah, my friends and family, whatever. I was just out there saying, oh, man, who'd you see? What was it like? Yeah, it's, it's it never goes away, you know. It's, um, yeah. And I hate the Dodgers. <laughs> I hate them. I hate them. And so I have to go out to Southern California, and, and you know I I uh, I try to stay away from. Ah, I got you. I got to see all those shirts. Yep. You oh, know yeah. I got to see all those shirts and all that crap. But my family used to be. Oh yeah, they were Braves fans when I was playing. Oh yeah, sure. And then they were Giants fans in the rivalry. You know. Oh yeah, they're Giants fans when I was playing. They're Tiger fans when I was playing. Uh, now they're now they're Dodger fans again. Yeah. I'm gonna have to get. You know, it doesn't matter whether here. family or whatever. There, there's always front runners everywhere. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get Claude on here and have to hear some of his stories about about those <laughs> rivalries and stuff too. So, uh, oh my God, well he played. Oh my, oh yeah, he, you know he's he played. You know we 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 played in the golden era, I think. But he played part of that too. But I mean, I mean, of course, in my kind of year, the '70s. But he played the '60s too. So, you know, all those guys, they were so good. Of course, we don't give them credit because, oh, the guys are better now. Yeah. Oh, well, did you ever have a trouble hitting fastballs? Nope. Of course not. I mean, I watch the game now, and the guy, half the team can't hit fastballs. Oh, it's too hard. They're better. There's more because – really? Uh, really? They didn't – well, you – I didn't have to face Randy. And, you know, you had Randy and Pedro, Pedro. Well, I had Nolan Ryan and – and, and you know, Clemens wasn't he? He was a hard throw, but he wasn't one of the hardest throwers. So you know, it's a, it's like the excuses that are made, and now with the guy is pitch count, and it's like, well, the guys already had three Tommy Johns. When did you guys think of that before? Yeah, we'll have to revisit <laughs> that and see how it's going to be in, 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 a, in a few years of how this all these these rule changes are going, and and see yeah, how it, you how know, it's I can't keep be. up, man. No, I, it's I, tough it, to watch. It, so. It's it's a, yeah. Well, the bases. Well, the one thing the baking the bigger bases is really going to change things. Yeah, huh. it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting for sure, and see how the fans <laughs> like it and everything else, though. But, yeah, we'll but like I said, I appreciate yeah. you jumping on here today, Daryl, listening and uh, hearing these stories. And like I said, we'll have to revisit this here. And have you back again? We'll talk about this stuff later on. We'll see how we'll we'll hey, let buddy. baseball figure it out for a while, and then we'll uh, we'll have to revisit it and see. So, man, I appreciate you jumping hey, on. You've always been my buddy, man. And you know what? I I saw you when you when you were starting, man, and you had a fantastic career, and uh, you have such a great reputation, buddy. Thanks for having me on, and and uh, you know we need to talk more baseball. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. Let, we'll get some more yeah. stuff going. We we'll have to get out. You're you're over there by me. You're up in the Fort Worth area, so we'll have to get together again. Maybe get out and play some golf or whatnot once it. Uh, once it warms up, so but I appreciate it, Daryl, and we'll uh, we'll be in touch. All right. Okay, buddy. All right, All right I appreciate it. Thanks, Daryl. Right, take care. Thanks. Uh -huh.